Hi, I'm Stephen Brown and I'm one of the developers on the PySC2 framework. Uh, today we're going to go through how to build a Zerg bot to play against a very easy AI. If you're wondering what PySC2 is, it's a framework built by DeepMind that uses Blizzard's uh, StarCraft 2 API to play against other bots or to play against the inbuilt AI or potentially against other humans. So the first step to building your agent, we're going to add a little bit of code here. So what we've got at the top here, we're importing all of the relevant libraries that we need to play the game. And then we've got a very basic agent. Now this agent won't actually do anything. Um, it'll just sit there and, and do nothing. Uh, what we do here at the, on line number seven is we extend from the, the base agent, which comes from the PySC2 library. And then one of the crucial parts of every agent is this step method here on line eight. What you see there is it receives a parameter called OBS, which is essentially an observation about what's happening in the game, the, the map um, and the mini map, the, what it sees on the screen, any of the units that it sees around, how many minerals you have, that sort of thing. And then here on line number 10, the most basic thing we do here is uh, our no op, which is essentially doing nothing. So in order to run this agent, we have a little bit of code here. Uh, this is fairly simple code. Um, on line number 15, we create a StarCraft 2 environment. Line number 16, we specify that we're playing the Abyssal Reef map, which you may know from the latter. Line 17, we are creating the players in that game. The first player we have is our agent, our bot. And then on line number 18, you can see that we add another bot, which is essentially the in-game AI. It's going to be a random race, uh, and it's going to be the very easy difficulty level. Uh, line number 21, we're specifying what's called feature dimensions. These essentially cover the, the screen resolution and the minimap resolution that the bot can see. Uh, the screen resolution is 84 by 84, and the minimap is 64 by 64. On line number 22, who are using a feature uh, called feature units. Uh, and this is essentially an advanced version of what you would see on the screen that includes uh, critical details about units such as their health, um, what type they are, whether they're the enemy or whether they're your units and potentially neutral units. So it gives us a little bit more information that you can get uh, just by looking at the screen. Uh, line 23, we have what's called a step multiplier. Now, the game operates in steps, 22.4 uh, steps per second. And so it, we have a multiplier of 16, so we'll only act every 16 steps. So one action slightly under every second. The beauty of running the game in this way is that it will actually run as fast as possible. So you don't have to wait for the time to go by. It will just act as quickly as it can. You can have a half hour game that completes in just a couple of minutes. And then on line number 26, we essentially do a run loop, which is, you know, run the game. And then this will just continue. When the game's finished, it'll start up a new game and it'll, it'll play again. So the first thing we want to do with our, with our agent is we want to build a spawning pool. So we'll just add a little bit of code in here into our step method. We're going to take these three methods here and put them above the step method. So the first one we've created here is get units by type. This will essentially give us all of the units that it sees on the screen with a given unit type. Uh, and then the second method uh, tells us whether the unit type is selected. There are actually two ways to check whether something's selected. There's a single selection and there's a multi-selection. These represent the different user interfaces that are displayed in the game when you play as a human. And the, the third method we add here is a can-do method, which essentially checks if what we are trying to do is possible to be done at this point in time. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense as we get further down. Uh, so what we do here is uh, if we have any lava selected, then we will train a zergling. Uh, otherwise, we want to make sure that we select the lava. So down on line number 45 here, we get all the lava on the screen. If there are any, we'll choose one at random. Uh, and then we want to select all of them using the control click method that we used before with the drones. Once that loops back through and we have our lava selected, we make sure that we can train a zergling, make sure we have enough minerals. Uh, and if we can, then we'll train some zerglings. 
one thing that will happen now that we have Zerglings uh, coming out is that we may run out of supply. So what we'll do is we want to check to see if we've got enough supply. Uh, and if we don't, then we'll train an overlord. So we'll drop a little bit of code in here right where we were. Uh, now, there is an observation that comes through called the player values. In this case, we're using the food cap, which is the supply limit, and the food used, which is the supply that we've used up so far. And by subtracting one from the other, we can calculate the free supply. If there is no free supply, then we want to train an overlord. We check if we can, and if we can, we will train an overlord. So that'll pump out an overlord, and then we'll be able to produce some more zerglings. Now that we have a bunch of zerglings coming out, we want to make sure that we can attack. One of the things that we need to do in order to attack is we need to choose an attack location. Now on this map, there's a spawn location at the top and there's a spawn location at the bottom. So what we will do is we'll calculate the location of our units on the minimap at the beginning of the game. And depending on where our location is, we'll predetermine the enemy location and we'll use that as the attack coordinates. Now at the, big, at the start of our agent, now at the start of the, our agent, we'll add a initialization method and we'll set the attack coordinates value to none. This will reset every time the agent plays. And then inside our step method, we'll add this little piece of code here. What this does is it checks on line 31, it checks if it's the first uh, step of the game. And then if it is, it'll calculate the X and Y coordinates of our units on the minimap. Now we're using an observation here called the player relative uh, minimap layer. The minimap features uh, include things like the height of the terrain, the fog of war, and in this case, the units and who they relate to. So the enemy, the neutral, or our units. This little trick here gets all the coordinates for our units, and then it returns them into these values. The one thing you'll see here is that we actually receive the values as Y and X, not X and Y as you might expect. When we send the values in, we send them as X and Y, but when we receive them, we receive them as Y and X. And this just has to do with how the data is structured. So in order to attack, we check if we've got any Zerglings and we want to make sure we have at least 20 Zerglings so that when we attack, our army can defeat the enemy. Now, in order to select the army, we use the select all army uh, action. We check if we can do it and if we can, we will execute it. It's the same as pressing F2 if you're a human player. And then once we have that and we know that we can attack, we send the uh, units across the minimap to the attack coordinates that, that we determined earlier. They'll go streaming across the map and then it'll continue to produce more zerglings. And that's it. That's, that's all you need to uh, train 20 zerglings and send them across the map. And then every time it, it has 20 zerglings on the screen, it'll continue to send them across the map. And this is quite effective. At, uh, as far as I've seen, it's won most of the games. So that's it for this bot. Uh, have a play around with it, see what you can do with it. And then we're gonna be back with some more videos to expand on this further.